You remind me, this is something I would like to do to, to all um, Democrats, all Democrats, but I'll limit it to the Democrats running for president. I would like to give them a stress test, show them a picture of Osama bin Laden, <laughs> and then a picture of George Bush, and see which one really makes them angry. I mean, all of their p pronouncements about their anger at Osama bin Laden and the terrorists, it's always sort of this abstract hatred. Whereas with Bush, oh, they really hate him. <laughs> That's real anger. I mean, the, 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 you know, of course, you know, and the, and the tragedy line. No, it's, it's not a tragedy. It's an outrage. It's not a natural disaster. Right. That is the way they want to treat it. And it's the same way with their anger about the terror. And, oh, of course, Saddam Hussein is a despicable man. But Bush really gets our goat. <laughs> tragedy. It is the party of McGovern now. That's the problem. And, and Scoop Jackson, their own example, proves it. I mean, I'd still, in fact, I, I, I said this to Dick Gephardt when I met him at a White House Correspondence Center. I was sitting next to him, and I said, you know, you've got to go back to being the old Gephardt. Um, I, I, you know, soft peddled it by saying of a few years ago, it was more like 20 years ago, when he was like the working class Democrat. Okay, he spoke for the unions, and I said, don't get me wrong, I hope you lose. But, but you guys are not speaking for anyone but the Barbara Streisands of the world anymore. What are you doing voting against drilling in Anwar when the unions desperately want that? And why won't they do that? Because Democratic primary voters are insane. Look at who is, you know, the runaway favorite among these people. Howard Dean. And you're dying for Dean to get the nomination. Yes, I am. Well, I have to say, I mean, that's what I told Gephardt. On one hand, I like that your party has become insane, because I think you're really shutting yourselves out of the White House for the foreseeable future. On the other hand, I just as soon have presidential elections where you don't have the fear of God in you every night. What if this man won? <laughs> well, and it also is the question of what's good for America. Right, because there's the chance that we could run another Bob Dole and somebody like Hillary could be in the White House and that would be an absolute disaster. I'd rather have somebody I just, you know, I just merely intensely hate and do not <laughs> fear for the future of America over. But I think the Democratic Party should go the way of the Whigs, start a new pop party with the Zell Millers, the Olympia Snows, the Arlen Specters. Right. Genuine blue dogs, but I I mean as long as the Democratic primary voters are insane. <laughs> I don't know how they do that. It's going to have to take a few more wallopings in a national election. They always run these phony southern males. That's the only way they've been able to get anybody in the White House in, you know, a quarter century now. Um, and then, of course, you know, they dash off to, to Cuba or New York City, Chappaqua. <laughs> Where is Bush going to go when he's, you know, in in 2008. <laughs> He's going to go back to Texas. He's not going to move to New York City. No, go right. Right. He is a real Southerner, whereas, you know, the Democrats get, get huffy whenever we have, you know, this happy, diverse convention and blacks are up on the stage. Oh, it's a minstrel show. Well, what's their minstrel show? They haven't been able to get white men to vote for them for 50 years. In every presidential election except 64, when Gold War lo Goldwater lost in a landslide, um, the Democrats would have lost the election if only men had voted. And yet, they keep running men. <laughs> and not only that, now it's got to be some phony southern white man. I, actually, I, dis I, know that, I know that the general approach to convincing liberals is that we must treat them like children. <laughs> We must be nice and hand them lollipops. I actually take a different view on converting liberals. I think um, the way to convert people is to make them laugh or to make them enraged. I think you have to bop them on the bridge of the nose. And, and I would submit that these scholars I respect who are all terrified about, <laughs> about what I'm doing now with treason, um, you know, these careful, scholarly academics have written these tome, measured, carefully worded tomes on the Rosenbergs and the Venona Project. They've been writing about the Cold War for 30 years, putting out great stuff, which I used in my book, and they haven't landed one punch on the bridge of a liberal. But three weeks ago, liberals were, were all, oh, well, you know, whether the Rosenbergs are guilty, it's, 
It's still up in the air. Who's to say? It's contested. As long as liberals don't concede something, it's contested. Um, in three weeks, I've gotten them to admit, okay, there were a lot of Soviet spies. Okay, McCarthy did say 57 and not 205. And okay, we're now going to start using comparisons to Maureen Dowd and Michael Moore as an insult. In three weeks, I've done that. In 30 years, they couldn't get them to admit that the Rosenbergs were guilty. And that's changing their behavior, not changing their mind. I think, I, I still think my approach is more effective. I'm not saying that, you know, I couldn't have written this book without the carefully worded academic scholarly work that's been done, but I think the evidence is certainly not on their side that being nice to liberals works. <laughs> so to have something that is sprightly and give readers a few laughs, I think is a good technique, but really, really in the end, I'm just writing for myself. <laughs> This is the way I would write, and even if I could be convinced that if I had gone through 17 on the one hand, on the other hand, I might convince one more liberal out there, I think I'd still write the way I write. Because it gives me laughs, and if I don't want to, I mean, I started realizing this, I, I began writing for human events. They are, by the way, very measured. They purge humor. <laughs> it's, more, it's more sort of crusading earnestness <laughs> and they used to, for the first two years I wrote for them they'd edit me by you know carefully they were they were the the joke bomb squad they'd go through and carefully cut out every punchline and finally they started letting a few through and I became their most popular writer now I'm the only one who's allowed to be sarcastic and funny in that newspaper um, and you know they've been carefully measured all this time I it's a, if you want came calm and scholarly judicious <laughs> it's out there but you know when I go back and read those those human events articles the way they ran in human events I would start reading them and think oh, I don't even want to read this myself something I wrote well, that's what I was starting to say in the cab about how I I've, I've been noticing this more and more and I think it's a liberal thing this idea that you can't you're you can't have an opinion except based on a life experience and the first example I was giving you is being in Harvard after 9-11 with the Muslim groups protesting me and at the time my Muslim boyfriend sitting in the front row because he's just driven me there and through this whole speech you know the Muslims are standing up denouncing me as being anti-Muslim blah 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 and at the end of it it never even occurred to me it literally never crossed my mind to mention that my boyfriend the Muslim is sitting right here and afterward he said to me you know I'm, I'm sitting here why didn't you tell them that and it never even would have crossed my mind or I mean he, he may not have said it that way but isn't that funny I think he said that here I am your Muslim boyfriend sitting here um, similarly CNN just wanted me to come on um, I think I may have emailed you about this um, a woman whose husband is in the military um, is hopping mad that I say liberals are treasonous and she wants to come on and you know cite her experience as being married to someone in the military and I said this sounds like a Jerry Springer show I'm talking about ideas here um, I mean, if you, if someone is going to translate, there's a liberal who disagrees with you. But the fact that she has a husband in the military is irrelevant to the point of the idea. And the same thing you get with, you know, John Kerry and George McGovern. Yes, they served honorably. Um, but as I have said on many occasions, does, if, if that's the case, then, then why is this um, rich uh, or rather... Um, <laughs> The, the, the husband of a series of, of, of heiresses telling me how much I should pay in taxes. I mean, this idea that you must have some life experience and this is what allows you to speak, and you're, you're authentic then. An idea is an idea, and it's true or not, whether or not I'm dating a Muslim. How did that happen, do you think, from there? You know, I could probably go back and figure it out, but I think it's some sort of liberal, like, authenticity thing and victim thing. Maybe it's the oversification of America. It could be, though. I, 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 I'm often defending Oprah. Have you seen her show? The Oprahfication is something different yes. from Oprah. She puts on a great show. The problem is, which I think sometimes people don't understand, is when... Um, the rest of the world and presidential candidates are behaving like they are Oprah. No, Oprah is Oprah, and she does a fabulous job, and her show is actually very good. No, I mean, it's this odd conundrum liberals have about free speech. They're out, you know, denouncing the war, burning Bush in effigy, burning the flag. If anyone objects, oh, no, we're exercising our First Amendment rights. They want to be 
slapped on the back. Um, meanwhile, manifestly, no one is trying to stop them from speaking. Otherwise, there wouldn't have been these wild anti-war protests before war with for the 18-month rush to war. Um, I come out and call them traitors, and that's the one speech. You know, everyone starts screaming at me. No, you can't say that. You can't say that. Well, sure I can. That's free speech, too. That's the one thing that's not allowed. And interestingly, I might add, um, you know, when these Democratic presidential candidates say that George Bush is tearing up the Constitution, Ashcroft tearing up the Constitution, they have, don't care about, you know, civil rights, constitutional rights, well, what are they saying? Isn't, isn't that treasonous behavior to be tearing up the Constitution? Um, when Gore and Kerry and so on say that Bush is putting the country in a worse position with regard to terrorism, well, what are they saying? The only per people you can't question the patriotism of or the um, war plans of are people who are manifestly rooting against America. It's the only speech that's disallowed. Right, I am a physical coward. This is why I never understand liberals saying, um, you know, we, we can't hit we can't hit Saddam Hussein. It'll just make them angry. <laughs> we could get angry fanatics trying to kill us mad, and they might try to kill us. You know, I don't understand that, because physical violence would definitely work for me. Somebody hits me once, that's it. <laughs> well, somebody could say that that wasn't patriotic. Oh, no, I am for the big burly men defending me. I'm just saying I am actually not a physical confrontation person. I hit the send button on my computer, and then I sit back quietly in my apartment giggling. <laughs>